Asia is the fastest growing market in almost any category, but especially in the resource category. The markets for oil and gas in, in Asia are, are large and are growing and in some regards undersupplied. So we know every time we're exploring for oil or gas, there will be a market for our product. I'm particularly excited about PNG. It's a, a, an area we believe of major oil company scale. We see a tremendous growth potential there. We have a big acreage position and we've already established a good level of reserves, which we intend to expand. The reserves are almost bottomless. People talk about the fantastic opportunities here and this is uh, uh, exciting a lot of interest. We're an exploration and production company with a very distinct Southeast Asian focus. Our areas of interest are offshore New Zealand, uh, onshore Western PNG and in the South China Sea. In addition to that, we have quite a lot of prospectivity in and around those plays, which we are now starting to develop. We began producing in New Zealand with the Mari field. That's been a very good investment for us. Um, we got all our money back in the first two and a half years of production, and we have uh, tremendous uh, uh, plans or expansion plans now to to rehabilitate and, and uh, expand that production for the long term. We have a wellhead platform uh, which uh, produces all of the crude from the subsurface reservoirs. That's connected by flow lines to a floating production and storage vessel called the Raroa, which is a converted uh, tanker. On the deck of the tanker, is all of the processing equipment that removes the, the water and gas from the oil. When that tanker is full with about 600,000 barrels of oil in it, a shuttle tanker comes up behind it, picks up the floating hose and offloads the crude oil. Shuttle tankers then travel off to the refinery. Now the main markets at the moment for our oil are the east coast of Australia or into Southeast Asia. Um, the product seems to be well liked by the refinery, so, so um, there's, there's good demand for the, for the product uh, in the region, which is, which is good. So getting the um, production rates increased following the drilling next year is certainly something that we're um, keen to do given the demand for Maori crude. In the process of developing uh, the, the reserves, we've seen some other opportunities in and around the Maori and Manaya fields. We've recently brought in a semi-submersible drilling rig called the Cantan 4, uh, which is drilling now a deep well on the Manaya structure, looking for more reserves. There's also a lot of opportunities here in New Zealand uh, for additional uh, oil production and gas production. So um, OMV uh, globally has, is committing um, a lot of money to do exploration drilling and additional development drilling in New Zealand. So that's really exciting for us. I think it's good news for the country and, and uh, good news for the Maori joint venture as well. The second fields that we brought online were in, in the South China Sea in a, in a very successful venture with uh, CNUP, the China National Offshore Oil Corporation, and Rock Oil. And that those fields have only recently come on stream um, and are producing really the, the, the lion's share of our cash flow at the moment. The Beibu project has uh, not only met all expectations, it's exceeded just about every uh, characteristic that we expected, both from a production point of view, reserves point of view, a profitability point of view, and a cost point of view. We brought this project in under budget, on time, with more reserves, so obviously there's going to be more profits. We're located in the Gulf of Beibu. Um, there is a lot of activity, including refining activity, uh, in that, around that Gulf. So there is a, a very high demand uh, for crude in that area. We have 
two wellhead platforms. They are connected with flow lines to a utility platform which we installed alongside the existing Chinese production hub. And crude for, for passes through that hub through a 15 kilometre pipeline to the Weizhou Island terminal where it's stored and then sold. One of the big wins out of the project is to have a partner that also can build things, design things and, and install things and drill the wells uh, using their own subsidiary companies. So that means that we have an alignment with what's good for us is also good for them and, and the, then the outcome is almost a guaranteed win, which it is in this particular case. We think Rock Oil um, is doing, doing a fine job uh, in, in China. Certainly uh, they've done a, a good job of representing our interests in the South China Sea uh, development. They have a very good reputation in Beijing and we believe uh, other work will flow from that and other opportunities. In fact, uh, we've recently announced a new joint venture with our existing partners in China, Rock Oil and, and Sinook. And this time it's in the, in the Bohai Bay area, which is in northern China. That license was by invitation. It wasn't by competitive tender or anything like that. And why was it by invitation? It had a lot of opportunity, but it, they had to have somebody in there that they trusted to do this well. Australians are regarded pretty well by the Chinese, in, particularly in the resources game. We've got a, a good name. They think they can learn things from us in this area. That's a good place for us to be. They've seen uh, how our own country has grown in recent years off the back of our resources industry and they've seen our industry go worldwide and uh, they feel comfortable dealing with us in, in this zone. We are very relaxed about going into countries like PNG and, and like China where we can really uh, capitalise on the experience we've got in Southeast Asia and our contacts there. The third area is Papua New Guinea. We're not yet on production. We're, we're in the exploration and reserves, reserves build phase there, and we've been very successful in that. We've got considerable oil and gas reserves in PNG, and we are now uh, involved in developing the first field, the Stanley field, which we expect to have on stream in 2015. We brought in Talisman, which is about a $10 billion Canadian company, uh, as our partner. They in turn brought in Mitsubishi, the, the big Japanese trading house, and recently, and we were very pleased to bring in as our strategic partner, Osaka Gas. And Osaka Gas is, is, is Japanese royalty. They're the second biggest utility company in Japan. PNG LNG coming on stream in the near future, and then if you see the reserve in the, uh, Papua New Guinea, it's increasing and uh, the population or the demand domestically is uh, rather small. We thought that the Papua New Guinea has a big potential to uh, export uh, the energy like LNG uh, to the future. And uh, you should not forget about the proximity uh, from Papua New Guinea to Japan. I think every CEO will tell you that their company is undervalued in the market. And I'm no exception to that. I think just as an example, uh, when we recently did the transaction with Osaka Gas, the look-through value of that tra transaction valued our PNG assets at $500 million. So uh, that's really not uh, baked into our share price at the moment. Our field locations in PNG are the Stanley Field, which was discovered in 1999, and that will be the site of our first development. The uh, other locations are at Elevala and, and Ketu. Recently, we've made a discovery at the Tingu lo location, which is located about five kilometres northwest of Elevala. We drilled a total of four successful appraisal wells on those discoveries and have more than doubled the size of the resource. To manage these operations, we have built a supply base at Kiunga, next to the airstrip. 
and we use this for storing the rig when it's not operating and it will also be the site of the uh, terminal, the oil terminal, uh, for the purposes of exporting the crude to a loading facility on the, on the Fly River. Between the seismic and the drilling we've, we've employed well over, you know, close to 200 uh, local nationals at times. Um, so, which is it's great for the community, it injects some cash into the economy, um, provides people with, uh, you know, a job and, and, and some security. No, there's nothing that is quite as exhilarating as seeing the Chinook fly and seeing all these guys working together safely and getting things done. Some companies in PNG have not understood the importance of community relations. And for us, if I had to think of the, the two biggest uh, challenges in PNG, the two areas that you should really focus on, one of them is logistics, supply chain, the other one is community affairs. And we have a group uh, uh, in, in PNG, uh, in, in, in Kiunga, a, a very well qualified group whose focus is on community affairs. We want to make sure that our operations don't uh, adversely affect people. In fact, we want to make sure that where we do have operations in the community, that they actually um, generate a benefit. People are starting to realise that Horizon is not just here to exploit. Horizon is here to be part of the community. The community is very appreciative of that. And from the government's point of view, it is, it is a very good thing. And this committee has got a very important role to play and, and for me, it, you know, it is the cornerstone of, of our community liaison efforts. My commitment goes back a long way. It goes back to when I was a young geophysicist uh, working on the Fly River and came to know and, and love the people in, in, in the Western <laughs> Province. We know that they've had a difficult life. We understand that for not too much money, something quite significant can be done. We have teamed up with the Sisters of Mercy, who have an operation in Kiunga, um, and they have a, um, a, a very good program, we think, to reduce infant and maternal mortality. And we, we, we are very keen and active supporters of that project. Horizon Oil is helping us in a number of ways. They're our major benefactor, really. Uh, so all of our programs are basically currently supported by the money that Horizon Oil donates. Um, the other way that they help is that they're available if we have an emergency, like health can ring them and ask, and if it works out, they can use a chopper. That's the beginning of our project, I mean, the Community Assistant Program. And once we get into production, we'll be <clears throat> looking at a couple of uh, the community projects or any other charity groups in, in the community. At the moment, we are preparing the Stanley site for the plant. We will have at Stanley two uh, separation trains, which will separate the condensate from the gas. The condensate uh, has water removed and goes into uh, storage tanks before entering the pipeline to Kiunga. The dry gas uh, goes through a compressor uh, and then is re-injected at a very high pressure back into the formation so that we can access it at some time in the future. The crude oil will come into Kiunga, into the terminal at the uh, Kiunga supply base via a six inch pipeline from there, the crude will go down a loading line to the, uh, to the banks of the Fly River, where we'll have a, have a loadout facility, and uh, the, the, the oil will be loaded onto a, uh, about a 4,500 tonne tanker, uh, which will take the, the crude to the market, which will be the Napa Napa refinery in Port Moresby. Stanley is running uh, about a, a year or two years ahead of Elevala Ketu and now Tingu. So we're still very much in the design phase uh, for that 
what we would see eventually as a combined Elevala Ketu Tingu development. At the moment, the, the activity is really focused on finalising the detailed design uh, of the facilities, uh, getting the contracts in place for fabrication and procurement, and crucially, you know, obtaining the, um, the development licence that we need from the PNG government to, you know, to enable us to proceed. The, the reason we're focused on Southeast Asia is we have an understanding of that area, our uh, core management group. Um, we think we have, we think that's something that differentiates us from our, our competitors. There's a lot of excitement and expectation being built on oil and gas. The markets are chiefly in North Asia, China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. These are places that are buying big and they're looking for new sources of power. Objectively, people should see that we've got a, a, a very solid reserves base which is largely undeveloped. So there's not a lot of risk remaining in the company, but the value added by developing that reserve space is going to result in a multiple uh, on our current share price.